Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number 39 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into Logic's project management features of which there are several for you to use. As you're producing, as you're recording, and as your projects are growing in size and scope, Logic offers several features for you to manage the complexity of your projects as they grow. From saving and managing different versions or project alternatives of your projects, if you want to save a couple different snapshots so you can flip between them, to reverting to previous safe states or backups in case you made a mistake and you need to backtrack. Consolidating your projects to ensure they're future-proof and have everything they need to open and run, to cleaning up and ridding your projects of any extra files that are no longer in use and are just taking up space. To explore these different project management features, let's first take a listen to this riff that I have in front of us on screen. This is a heavier rock riff with guitars, bass, and drums. Let's take a listen. Cool, so there's my basic rock riff. First, let's explore project alternatives in Logic, which allows you to save multiple versions or snapshots of your project in various states that you can easily flip between. To save or manage your project alternatives, just go up to the top menu bar, right above Logic Pro, and click on File. And about halfway down, we have this option for project alternatives. You can see right at the bottom of the secondary menu that we have a single project alternative at this moment. So let's create a second project alternative by clicking on new alternative. A dialog pops up offering us to give our new project alternative a unique name. I'll name this project alternative drums and bass and I'll click okay. Okay, we've now created a new project alternative, a new version of our project that's saved in the same exact project folder and file as our original project. You can identify which project alternative you're working with by looking at the title at the top of the main window. In this case, the title starts with the project name followed by the project alternative name. And if we go right back to file, go down to project alternatives, we see the two different options that we can flip between. So to make this obvious of which version we're working with, let's mute all the guitars. So we're working with just obviously the drums and bass. Awesome, so I'm going to use command and S to save. But of course, you could go up to File, go down to Save to also save. And now if we go up to File, go down to Project Alternatives, we can flip between these two versions very easily just by clicking on our first original version. And there you have it, the original save version of our project that we can now flip between the bass and drum version and this version. Let's save another project alternative. In this case, perhaps I'll mute the rhythm guitars so we have just the lead, just the drums, and just the bass. Cool, so let's go right back up to file, go down to project alternatives, and create another new alternative. So I'll name this Leedy, and click OK. All right, so in this case, we get another pop-up that's offering, do you want to save the original project alternative before we create a brand new project alternative? And that's because I made some changes. I muted the rhythm guitars. So a change has occurred and Logic just wants to know, do you want to save this before we create another version? In this case, I want to keep this as the original version. So I'm going to click on don't save. And now if we go up to file, go down to project alternatives, we can now flip between the original drums and bass, and leady. And we'll save. There you go. If we go back up and go down to project alternatives, we can edit the different alternatives. So this is the original. So I'd like to rename the original, not just project management, but we'll name this all instruments. And once I press return on my Mac's keyboard, that name is now committed to that alternative. We can also remove alternatives if we find that some are no longer necessary. And you can select multiple versions by holding command and clicking. 
I'm going to remove the leady version. And of course, Logic being diligent just wants to double check. Do you really want to delete this alternative because this action cannot be undone? I'm going to click delete. And now we can click done. And we can flip once again between these two different versions. Next, let's explore backing up in Logic Pro. If we go right back up to file and go down to revert to, we have in this case, 10 different backups of this particular project. A backup is essentially a save state. When you use the key command, command S to save or go to file and save, you're creating a backup and we can revert to these different save states if we need to. So for example, just to keep things easy, let's mute the base and use command S to save. Let's go up to file, go down to revert to. So I just saved this version. Let's go down to backup number one and click. Ever diligent logic needs to know if you really want to revert to this backup because any changes that you've made since that backup may be lost. But yes, let's revert. And there we have it. The base is no longer muted. So for example, let's make a really big mistake. I'm going to use command S to save this version. And then let's get rid of by accident, let's say get rid of this guitar and save. Oh no, we've lost our lead guitar and we didn't mean to get rid of it. And let's say it's long gone in undo steps. Well, we can revert back to a previous backup. So let's go to backup number two and click revert. Oh snap, there's our muted bass, which we can unmute, but we have that lead guitar. It's been preserved because of a previous backup. So I'll use Command and S once again to save. The backup feature in Logic is a true lifesaver, and you can actually customize how many backups are saved with each project by going up to the menu bar, going to Logic Pro, going to Settings, and navigating to the General Settings. And right here, under Auto Backup, in this case, we have the last 10 alternative versions, but you can either turn off this feature, which I don't recommend, save as few as one alternative version or save up to a hundred different alternative versions. In this case, I'm going to set this to 30 alternative versions and you just close the settings once you're done. Let's go up to file. Let's go down to revert and you can see we have 10 backups, right? So let's now use command and S several times to save several more versions. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's go to file. Go down to revert to, and there we have it. Now we have 15 different versions. Let's use command and S again. Okay, so we have to double check once again by going to revert to. Now we have 16 different versions. Next up, we have consolidate. By going to file, going down to project management, we have these two different options to clean up and consolidate. Let's select consolidate. As you work on your projects and you're adding all sorts of things like audio files and sampler data and alter B and who knows what else, Logic might not necessarily be saving these files to the project itself. And while right now your project may run fine, this could cause problems in the future when you start to move things from one hard drive to the next, or if you delete files or who knows what could happen in the future. So Logic offers this handy feature to copy and collect all those files to the project itself so the project is self-contained, that it will always open exactly the way that you expect it to without having to refer to other hard drives, other projects, or anywhere else. For example, if we cancel this dialog for right now, if we go up to file once again, go down to project settings and go to assets, I made sure to disable this option for copying audio files. And remember, project settings are saved on a per project basis. They're not globally set. So if I close this and let's navigate to the finder, I'm going to bring in this base loop right into my project. Okay, so I've dragged in a new audio file and let's navigate to the project folder, the audio files folder, and let's now save this project. Just take note of the name of the file, which is base loop, and take notice of the audio files folder as well to see if this file with this name is going to be saved into that folder. Okay, so let's go to the project, go to file, let's go down to save, all right, we've saved it. Let's go to the finder and look at that. Our base loop is not saved in the project. Instead, the project is referring to that file that is saved on the desktop. So again, if we delete this file from the desktop, the next time we open our project, it won't know where that file went and it won't be able to load it. So I'll undo in the finder by using command and Z. So let's fix this. 
Of course, we could go to File, Project Settings, and go down to Assets, and enable this option to copy the audio files to the project. Once we enable this option and then save, that file will be copied to the project's audio file folder. And honestly, I recommend that you do this for all of your projects, but just to illustrate, let's go to File, go down to Project Management, and then click on Consolidate. All right, let's copy all the relevant files. And of course, we wanna make sure to copy audio files. Let's click OK. And now if we navigate to the finder, there you can see, base loop saved in our audio file folder of this project. Consolidate is a very handy feature to collect everything that's required for each project to run successfully. And that brings us to cleanup. So first, what I wanna do is save a new project alternative and we'll call this all instruments with base loop. And sure, we'll save this version. I'll go back up to file, project alternatives, and edit. And I'm going to get rid of this drums and bass version. Click delete and click done. All right, cool. So let's save. The last bit is when you're at the end of a project and you know it's done and you want to rid that project of bloat. Just files that have been collected that are not in use or are just taking up space on your hard drives. To do that, we can go once again up to File, go to Project Management, and go to Cleanup. Cleanup will eliminate any unused files, backups, and media browser files that are no longer in use in your projects. If I deselect backups, I also deselect the unused file portion. If I select Delete Unused Files, this includes deleting the backups as well. Now remember, Backups are those different save states that you can revert back to in case you make a mistake. All right, so let's just go ahead and click OK. OK, seems like nothing really happened. If Logic was going to delete some unused files, a pop-up would have occurred telling us which files would be removed. So let's get rid of a file to see this dialog in action. Let's select our base loop and press Delete and then Save. Let's go back up to File project management, and clean up. And let's try it again, because in theory, we're no longer using the base loop file. Yet again, nothing happened. What's going on here? Well, if we save and we go to file, go to project alternative, and go to our previous project alternative, let's select the base loop now and press delete and save. All right, so let's now once again, go up to file, Go down, go to cleanup, and let's now click OK. Still, nothing seems to be happening here. What is going on? Well, if we open the browsers using this button in the upper right-hand corner or pressing key command F, if we now go to edit, select all unused files that are currently being referenced in the project browser and go down to edit and delete and then save and go to File, Clean Up under Project Management and press OK. There we go, there's that file that's no longer in use in our project. So Clean Up will clean up your projects of extra files that you're not using, but Logic is trying to protect the integrity of your projects by not deleting files that are in use in any project alternative, as well as anything that's referenced in the project browser. And just in case you were wondering, the project browser shows you every audio file as well as the audio regions that reference those audio files. Okay, so if we go back to the finder, we see base loop right here. Let's click OK to remove it. If we go back, that file is no longer part of the project. That file has been placed in the trash to be disposed of. So there you have it, four very handy features for project management in Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more in our final video in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.